So in this example here, we have oil in a counterflow heat exchanger with water at the bottom here. So we have hot oil and it's going to initially enter at 450 Kelvin and exit at 350 Kelvin. And we have cold water entering at 20 degrees Celsius and five bar, and this is liquid water. And we're told that in this heat exchanger, we actually don't want to have any water vapor present. So in other words, we want the exit here, so the exit of the water at exit four, to have a quality of X4 equals zero. We're given the mass flow rate of the oil and the specific heat of the oil. We're told there's no, re no real pressure drop between P2 and P1 or P3 and P4. And we're looking for the mass flow rate of the water in kilograms per second in order to ensure that there's no water vapor buildup at the exit. Also, we're told that in the entire control volume, we have no heat exchange or heat transfer and that potential and kinetic energy can both be neglected. So to find the mass flow rate of a single fluid of one of the two fluids in a heat exchanger, I'm gonna apply the energy balance equation over this heat exchanger. So we're gonna have that zero equals the heat transfer of the control volume, say CV, minus the power of the control volume, CV, plus the mass flow rate's coming in, so we'll have uh, M dot, so it's the summation of M dot I H I minus the summation of M dot E H E. So essentially all of the incoming mass flow rates times the incoming enthalpies minus the exiting mass flow rates times the exiting enthalpies. And um, we're not going to have the uh, kinetic or potential energy, so this is going to be our entire formula right here. So now we can already cancel out our heat transfer because we already know that heat transfer can be neglected. And then furthermore, we can also cancel out our power here since a heat exchanger doesn't actually produce or consume power. It's not like a motor or a pump or uh, a turbine. So you can cancel out your power here and you're going to be left with zero equals uh, the summation of m dot i h i minus the summation of m dot e h e. So now if we apply this equation to our specific problem here. We're going to have that zero equals m dot i, so we'll call that m dot o for oil. So we'll have incoming m dot o h1. My, uh, we're going to have to actually add, so plus m dot w for the water, plus m dot w, and it's going to be h3 for inlet 3, and that's all of our inlets. So now you have to subtract all of our exits. So that's our all of our inlets in that uh, set of brackets. So for our exit, we're going to have minus open bracket the summation. So m dot o h two plus because again it's the summation of exits plus this um, m dot w and this is going to be h four for exit four. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out an m dot o and an m dot w, and if you do, you can actually simplify these equations into zero equals m dot o times h one minus h two plus m dot w times h three minus h four. This is essentially just the distributive property from the equation above. So now the next thing I'm going to do is solve for m dot w for the mass flow of the water, and you're going to have m dot w equals m dot o times h1 minus h2 divided by h4 minus h3. So all I really did here to get to this equation is I subtracted the m dot w h3 minus h2 from both sides, and then you have, you have a negative m dot w, so when you divide by negative 1, you actually just flip the signs of your h3 and h4, and you're left with h4 minus h3 on the bottom in the denominator. So now we need to fetch our values for the enthalpies, but notice that you're actually given some unknown oil, so obviously we can't really look that up in the property table, so we're going to have to use the equivalent substitution for enthalpy, or the approximation, so we'll actually have this equal to the mass flow rate of the oil times the specific heat, so it's actually given as just C, and that C is equal to two kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, so the specific heat is going to be C times T1 minus T2, 
And this, this equation here, this little expression here, is equivalent to h1 minus h2. But now we're going to divide this whole thing here by h4 minus h3. And I'm going to leave them as that just because we have plain old water, which we can easily get from the property table. So now let's plug in what we have. So m dot o, we have 10 kilograms per second. And then the specific heat was just 2 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. T1 minus T2 would be 450 minus 350 Kelvin. And that's everything for the oil. Now for the water, we have H4 and H3. So for H4, we're going to have a quality of 0 and a pressure of 5 bar. So if I turn to table A3 and I go to 5 bar, and I look for that specific enthalpy at x equals 0, or the saturated liquid, so this column right over here, and they line up here at 640.23 kilojoules per kilogram. And now we have to subtract H3. So for H3, we have 20 degrees Celsius and 5 bar. So if you look at 5 bar, we have a saturation uh, temperature of 151.9 degrees Celsius. We were only at 20 degrees Celsius, so therefore we are in the compressed liquid region. So we can approximate using the saturated liquid specific enthalpy of 20 degrees Celsius for water, and we'll have 83.96 kilojoules per kilogram. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll find that your mass flow rate of your water is equal to 3.595 kilograms per second. So essentially, this gives us our lower limit and tells us that m dot w, the flow rate of the water, must be at least a minimum of 3.595 kilograms per second. So your range is 3.595 and greater.